What's up everyone, this is Andre from Indie Arts Midwest, and in this tutorial I will address a much easier and efficient way to set up LEGO terrains using Blender. As always, this tutorial assumes that the user has basic knowledge using Blender and its interface. So let's begin. We start with all the obvious stuff. Importing the model. In my case, it's Collada, so .dae. Yours may be different, so import according to type. Duh. On a side note, I usually run into issues using Collada or SketchUp files when it comes to separating pieces before use. So instead of selecting each stack and joining them individually, I found that it's easier for me to Alt P clear parent keep transform followed by Control J to join all of the pieces at once. Also, depending on how much depth your terrain has will determine how tall or short your stacks need to be. My terrain will need at least a six stack, so we'll go with that. After separating your pieces and hiding the ones you don't need, right now at least, we can focus on one of the two reasons I made this tutorial. First being scale. So we can chalk this up to a matter of opinion and that's fine, but I stick to the blender scale and I've seen quite a few tutorials having the user scale down to the size of the Lego piece, adding planes, subdividing them, and attempting to match the piece to the newly created grid thing. So we're scrapping those in place of matching blender scale and this gives us much better results in the end with less work once your stack is ready shift s selection a cursor top view Add or unhide your default cube. Select your stack and scale it to basically the same size of the cube. And now, <sighs> delete the default cube. Add a plane. We'll go to the modifier tab. Add an array. Set the count to 64 or just stick to the power of 2 to keep things clean for now. Add another array and change also set to 64. Apply both. Now I like to cover all bases and tab into edit mode to do a mesh cleanup with merge by distance. I may not have done it in this frame, but take note on the number of faces you have. In my case, it's 4096. Now we're ready to add our terrain. If you don't have the add-on enabled, go ahead and do that now. There's not much to say on the settings other than go with something you like. And I went for a setup oddly equal in depth.
so now we'll scale it up to 8 and another 8 or 16 I guess whatever anyways it should be essentially the same size as your plane grid we then move it into place Now it's time to add a particle simulation to the grid plane using these settings. If your PC can't handle the heavy loads of the particle sim, consider turning down the viewport percentage to something like 5% or maybe 1% if it's that bad. You can always render your scenes out and I would rather wait on the render than having a computer crippled by trying to process all of that in one shot. With the grid selected, we go to the modifier tab and add a shrink wrap. Set to project, check positive and negative, and our target is the terrain. Lastly, we drag the modifier above the particle sim, and our grid should wrap beautifully with the terrain.
If your results are close, but you're noticing gaps of terrain are popping through, consider adding more to your stack and or moving it up on the z-axis and resetting its location using control A. And look at that. Ah, nice. Great, so I hope you found this tutorial informative, and I know there are a lot of tutorial options that go along this subject, but I love a solid process, and if you had to repeat it for your large or small projects, this is a better way to go. And I'm saving you time and processing power. So, thanks for watching, like and subscribe, see you in the next one.